Welcome. For static electricity, we're going to discuss conservation of charge, the electrical properties of conductors and insulators, and then we'll get into a little bit of Coulomb's law. If you are following along in your ISM packet, you will see that this material is in page 149 to 151 of your Mike Dickinson ISM packet. For the law of conservation of charge, you need to know a very important thing, and let me see if I can paste that. Woo! And that is this here, that you cannot create or destroy charge, but you can shift it around. So let's say that we have some big metal ball. Let's say it's made of steel and it's got an excess charge of we're gonna say 6.2 microcoulombs. When you're dealing with charge you're always going to be in something incredibly small like a microcoulomb which means times 10 to the negative sixth. And the only way you could have built up this charge is by dumping electrons on there. You can't remove protons because they're locked in the nucleus. So the IV may ask you, if you take that steel orb and you touch it to this thing that has a charge of zero, what's the net charge going to be once the charges are allowed to spread out? Charges hate each other. So what you'll end up with is each one will share the charge, and this guy might only have 3.1 microcoulombs, and this guy has 3.1 microcoulombs, with the main point being you had a net charge of 6.2 microcoulombs here, and you still have a net charge of 6.2 microcoulombs here. The electrons have spread out. Now then, between conductors and insulators, Conductors, you probably know, allow electrons to flow, whereas insulators, no flow. What's going on is within conductors, let's say you've got a copper atom, it's got, I don't know, 20, 30 electrons. It's actually only going to let probably one of those electrons jump from atom to atom. But if every atom in copper is allowed to swap one electron, that's going to add up to a lot of electrons that can move around. With insulators, on the other hand, all of those nuclei hold on to their electrons tightly, and so you can't have charge shifting around on an insulator. Some examples of conductors is and you can write this down actually in figure 6.6 .6. all metals are conductors and so for example copper gets used all the time in wiring gold would be a great insulator we put that in wiring if it weren't so expensive same with silver one non-metal kind of close to a minute ago, is graphite, which is made of carbon. That's in your pencil lead. It's conductive. Insulators, though, examples is plastic. That's why you make the outside wires with plastic or rubber. Wood is not good for wiring uh, paper. And glass. Four. Four. Coulomb's law. Let me make a drawing. Let's call this figure 6.7. You've got something hanging on a thread. And you've got something else. They are both the same charge, 
you can probably guess that this is going to push away, this is going to push away, and they repel. Duh. Same thing. If you have two things hanging on strings, this one is positive, this one is negative, you know opposites attract. That's also part of Coulomb's law, that they would be pulled together. However, let me move to another page. Let's call this figure 6.8. And if you've got two objects, let's call them a distance r part. Maybe this has a charge of q1. This is q1. They're the same. Positive, positive. You're going to get a certain charge, a certain force, pushing them apart. But then let's say there's still a distance r. And now this thing has a charge of 2q. And this is the same as it was before. If you have one of these guys with twice as much charge, then the force is twice as much. If you then said, all right, what if I had these same charges, Q1 and Q2, well, that's called Q1 also, but now let's say it's twice as far apart. You know it's going to be a weaker force because they're farther, but it's not just cut in half. It's reduced to one-fourth of what it is. So this is only f over 4. This is only f over 4 as it's pushed apart. What this type of law is, is this. Maybe I'm going to pause that and write that down. Or maybe it's already written down. But anyway, it shows that they're proportional. And also there's an inverse... It's inversely proportional to the square of the distance. And what this equation looks like is this here, where these Q's are the charges of each object. R is the distance between them, and k is this crazy constant, 8.99 times 10 to the ninth, ninth, with these crazy units on top. That's, that's the law. We'll learn more about it a little bit later.